You cannot be too nice in this world, man. I made videos talking about this, short form videos in the past, how to not be too nice or signs are too nice. And then I would see comments and it, I would even get messages as well from people saying, oh, Josh, what are you talking about? You should always be nice. This, this is this is stupid. This is dumb. Well, you should always be a kind person. And I don't know if people, those people were intentionally misinterpreting what I was saying or just choosing to not understand what I'm saying. Because of course you should be a nice person. You should be a kind person. You should not be going out of your way to be a horrible person and just make people's lives worse. But we have to understand that unfortunately we live in a world where there are people who will take advantage of your kindness if you're not careful. And you gotta have the skills to recognize that. And honestly, from my own experience, being someone who's just a bit of a pushover and just way too nice, like you don't got many boundaries and any limits to who you are as a person, people will walk all over you and you will get less. The people who are winning in life, the people who are making the most money, blowing up on social media or just being very successful, they have a little bit of that capacity to not always be the nice guy. Because you need that, you need that edge to be successful in life. Let me tell you my own story with this, because I used to be a, a heavy people pleaser. I used to be so nice. And it comes from two things. First off, I grew up, so I have a black family, obviously, and I grew up in a all white neighborhood, basically. So I was the only black kid in my grade. I was like the only black kid in school. And I was also a black kid in school who didn't fit any of the black stereotypes. So a lot of kids would make fun of me because in their eyes, I wasn't black. So I didn't dress like a black guy and I spoke too proper in their eyes. So they thought that I talked like a white guy and even some of my own hobbies. I remember I was skateboarding one time and one kid was like, what? You're a black kid who skateboards? That doesn't make any sense. You're weird, right? So already I was looked at as a bit of an outsider. And very quickly I learned that I needed to adopt certain behaviors in order to essentially not sit by myself at lunch. Because y'all know how it is in middle school, high school, if you're even a little bit different from people, they'll be making fun of you, they'll ostracize you, you'll be looked at as a weirdo. So I started developing more people-pleasing habits so that I could make more friends and not rub people the wrong way and, and just look like everybody else and, and not sit by myself at lunch. And the second source of this was basically just my own family life growing up. So my dad was always working and then my mom, you know, she went through a lot of things in life that made it really hard for her to be a great mom. She, you know, was taking a lot of medications and was dealing with health issues and things and it affected her mental health a lot. Essentially, I was in an environment where I had to adopt certain behaviors in order to warrant attention or affection or any kind of just care placed on my own needs and desires. And so these are all things that were just formulated in childhood for me. And as I got older, you know, these habits became solidified. And it wasn't until in my 20s where I started to aggressively chip away at those habits. And it's crazy because some of the uncomfortable conversations I've had these days, <laughs> the things I've done, the decisions I've had to make, I would not have had the strength to do this years back. So I made significant progress with this. And I, I could tell you this from firsthand experience, being too nice won't get you far in life at all. You will be setting yourself up to get walked all over and to have your needs and your priorities and your wants and desires overlooked. Now, the first step to change is self-awareness first and foremost. So in this video, I'm gonna go through signs that you are too nice for your own good. Oh, and by the way, if I sound like I have a lisp while I'm speaking, I'm wearing these Invisaligns in my teeth. So just bear with me if I sound a little crazy when I'm talking. Also, I have a completely free newsletter where I just send out once a week some motivation or advice or something knowledgeable or insightful completely for free. It's free knowledge. If you're interested in it, scroll down to the top link of the description box and click it. It's completely free. Come on, it's free. I'm just helping you out. All right, number one, you are always the go-to person for favors. You might have become the default person that people turn to when they need help, regardless of the nature of the favor and its impact on your time and resources. This typically happens when you develop an unhealthy habit of saying yes to everything. You rarely say no to people's requests, which can give you a reputation of being reliable. But see, when you're doing it this way, when you're always saying yes to people, you're developing an unhealthy relationship with people to where they place less value on your time and your resources. Some of you watching this may be in situations where you feel as if people are treating you more like a personal assistant and not a person who has their own life and their own priorities and their own wants and needs in life. This can also happen if you have an intense desire to want to be liked or desired. 
right? Like that fear of sitting alone at lunch. And this will negatively impact your life in a lot of ways. For example, overcommitment. You could feel as if you're constantly stressed and overwhelmed because you're spending so much time juggling other people's wants, needs, and priorities on top of your own. And the stress associated with that is tremendous because constantly holding this burden of trying to meet other people's needs can take a mental toll. And another way this could start to negatively impact your life is you'll start to neglect your personal life. So your hobbies, your goals, your interests, your self-care. An example I've given before is, you know, you could be talking on the phone with someone and it could be a conversation that's not even that important. And it's really late at night and you have to get up really early in the morning. You have a long day ahead of you the next day. You're afraid to end the phone call because if you think if you end the phone call, the other person's gonna be mad, then they're not gonna like you, then they're not gonna wanna be your friend. And guess what, now you're alone. Now you're sitting alone at the lunch table. All right, number two, you avoid confrontation at all costs. This means you go out of your way to avoid any kind of minor disagreement or conflict. Even when it's important, it's imperative for you to address a situation directly. And once again, I've talked about this before in short form videos and I've seen comments saying, well, I just do it because I wanna avoid the drama, you know? I like a stress-free life, keep the peace. And again, I think those people were just purposefully misinterpreting what I'm saying because I'm not saying you should go out of your way to start fights and create drama for no reason. It's just having the ability to stick up for yourself out of self-respect when necessary. And again, I'll reiterate this again, it doesn't mean everything has to be a fight or drama or an argument. Because I don't care what anybody says, if you do not have the ability to stick up for yourself with the things you care about, you'll get walked all over in life. Let me tell you a story. So I used to work in sales and I worked in a sales team and I had a boss. He was kind of an emotional guy. He wasn't very good at controlling his emotions. So from time to time, he would have these random blowups where he would just freak out and just let out all this steam and just start yelling. And I had a coworker who one day, my boss was talking to him and randomly, you know, our boss just started cussing out our coworker and we had open floor seating. So everybody on the floor is hearing this guy cussing out our coworker in front of everybody, right? Just completely embarrassing and completely uncalled for. He's very disrespectful. And I remember shortly after that, I saw my coworker and my boss walk around the corner and have a chat. And at lunch that day, I had lunch with that coworker and I asked him about that. Like what happened when y'all went around the corner to talk? And he said that after our boss cussed him out like that, he's like, yo, I need to talk to you. And he pulled him around the corner and he basically just let him know. He's like, look, you're my boss and I work for you and I'm gonna do everything I can to work as hard as I can for the success of this team. And if you tell me to do something, I'm gonna do my best to do it. All I ask is that you treat me with respect. You're a grown man, I'm a grown man. We're both adults here, okay? Don't talk to me like that again. That was highly disrespectful. All I ask is for basic respect and basic human decency, and I'll work as hard as I can for you. Nothing crazy, nothing dramatic. He just let him know you can't be talking to me that type of way. And he said that our boss said to him, Honestly, I really appreciate you as a man pulling me around the corner and having this conversation with me. And I acknowledge you know, the way I acted was completely unprofessional. It wasn't cool. And I'm sorry, I apologize. That's what I'm talking about. Having the ability to stick up for yourself. People will have way more respect for you if you can do that. Now, let me give you a story that's the complete opposite of this. So shortly after I graduated college, it was like my first year out of college, I had a boss who was the same. He was just honestly not a good guy and he could not control his emotions and he would just cuss people out and be verbally abusive to people in the office all the time to the point where we would have female employees who would just go to the bathroom and cry after their interactions with him. He was a horrible guy. And somehow he built up leverage within the company to where it was very difficult to fire him. When I was hired, so this is when I used to work in accounting. This is before I went over to sales. I was the, the youngest guy in the department and I, you know, I had no work experience and I also didn't really know how to navigate corporate America. And there was one day where I, I think I sent an email one time and there was like a minor typo, the sm smallest mistake. And this guy in front of everybody, open floor seating, just started cussing me out, freaking out, belittling me in front of everybody. And in that moment, I didn't know how to navigate the situation because, you know, I didn't really understand corporate America and hierarchies and stuff that well. I was like, should I talk to HR? Is HR even on my side? Like, what do I do? Do I stand up and cuss him out too? Because if I do that though, like, well, what if they fire me? I don't know what to do in this situation. But I was livid. I was really angry. And I remember um, I had 
a coworker who after that pulled me around the corner and just gave me this tip, um, which is related to the first story I gave you. He said, he's like, look, if someone ever does that to you, even in the work workplace, pull them around the corner and have a word with them. You don't have to start a fight. You don't have to start an argument, but you've got to at least let them know that what they did is uncalled for. Communicate to them that you are worthy of respect. And if they decide to keep doing it, that's on them. Then you can, you can loop in HR or do whatever, pull any other lever you have to. And I learned a very valuable lesson that day. It's like right after I got out of college. Let me give you another example. Let's say you save up money for a really long time to get a really expensive car, your dream car. And you park that car and you walk into the store and you come out of the store and you see some kid kicking your car, just kicking it. What are you gonna do? You're probably gonna be pretty angry, right? You may, yo, 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 what are you doing? Get away from my car. Stop touching it, leave it alone. You're probably gonna be angry. Why? Because in your eyes, that car is valuable. You place a lot of value on that car. Because here's the thing, we as people will fight to defend or protect whatever we deem as valuable. So start looking at yourself as a valuable person. Protect yourself and those around you like you're something that matters. Number three, you rarely express your true feelings. This is one I used to struggle with a lot, but this involves suppressing your opinions and your emotions and your feelings because you want to keep the peace and you also feel like your wants and your needs don't really matter compared to other people's. Let me give you an example here. So an example I've given in the past in short form videos is you could be hanging out with two friends and one friend goes, yo, let's go find something to eat. Y'all want pizza or tacos? And deep down, you want tacos. But see, you don't wanna say you want tacos because you don't want your opinion shot down. So you just say something like, oh, anything is fine. And then the other friend who is not afraid to voice their opinion goes, yo, uh, I want pizza. And then your other friend goes, yeah, let's pizza. And then your other friend goes, all right, pizza it is. And now you're angry because you gotta get pizza even though deep down you want tacos. The issue with this is when you don't voice your wants and your opinions and your needs, you will end up living a life according to other people's wants, needs, and desires. Your needs will always get overlooked unless you speak up about it. One reason I think this happens is just fear of rejection being afraid of having your opinions shot down. Another one would be just this unrealistic idea that your wants and needs just aren't as important as other people's. And I would say a third one is just general lack of assertiveness, not having the ability to communicate what you need in an effective manner. Number four, you apologize too much. Now, I firmly believe that if you know that something is your fault, and you need to take accountability for that, then you should apologize. You should apologize for those actions. But the issue with this is if you're apologizing too much, especially for things that are not your fault, do this. You just give yourself a little smack. <laughs> That's for me to you, okay? Stop doing that. You can also fall into this if you're dealing with someone who's very manipulative. I've been in situations where I've dated people where, especially when I was younger, where they will do something wrong and I call that out, but somehow they flip it in a way where now I'm the one apologizing for their bad behavior. That's another thing to be aware of. Like I said in the beginning of this video, we live in a world where unfortunately, if you're not careful, people will take advantage of your kindness. I think one of the biggest reasons this happens is because you naturally view yourself as a burden. You think your presence is just a net negative for everybody around you. You always feel like you're in the way. And the thing I wanna say about this is, look, it all starts with the mind because right now, there are people walking this earth who are just exponentially worse than you, worse in life, worse people, they're just horrible people and they're walking around telling themselves that they are royalty, that their presence is a blessing for anybody who walks in their path. There's a quote by Marcus Aurelius where he says, the quality of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Number five, people take advantage of you. So in these situations, people are just straight up taking advantage of your generosity and your kindness. And one of the reasons I think this happens is just having an inability to set boundaries. You don't know how to set boundaries with people. Also a fear of rejection. So kind of like a previous point I said, you're just constantly saying yes to people. And the effects of this are just exhausting. You know, constantly giving to people and not receiving anything back. Yeah, that's a lot, it sucks. And you know what really sucks about this too? You feel your self-worth going down. That's the thing that sucks about all of this. When you're behaving in these ways, you know that your self-worth is going down like this. You don't feel good. You know you're getting taken advantage of. You know people are walking all over you, but you're caught in this loop of constantly you know, doing these behaviors and then people don't treat you the way you wanna be treated, but then you're afraid of getting rejected, so you just keep doing all these, these bad habits. And the thing is, if you're exhibiting a lot of these traits, you've probably noticed that people don't have as much respect for you overall, which really sucks by the way people speak to you, certain jokes they make, they place no value on your opinion even when you do decide to speak up. 
Because at that point, in their mind, they got you all the way down here. You're not that important to them. Now, like I said, the first step toward change is self-awareness. And this is all stuff that I had to do. I did some journaling and just some inner work to be aware of certain habits I was doing before I started to correct them. So hopefully this video helped. Hopefully it added some self-awareness. Click this video right now. I think you'll enjoy it. And remember, some progress is better than no progress. Peace.